This video is sponsored by World of Warships. I heard them say we've reached Morrowind. I'm sure they'll let us go. Stand up. There you go. You were dreaming. What's your name? When it comes to the Elder Scrolls series, it can be hard to wrap your head around just how massive and in-depth the game world and lore really are. Thousands of years of in-game history, from the origin point of all creation through countless eras of empires rising and falling, great wars, natural disasters, it's a lot, dude. So with my videos, as you likely know, I like to attempt to slow things down a little bit by highlighting some of the individual characters of virtual worlds just like Tamriel. You know, the NPCs, the big bad villains, and of course we can never forget the heroes. Epic fantasy worlds wouldn't be much without these guys, the characters that cleanse the inevitable corruption of the land, slay ancient awakened evils, do the Stop. dishes, that sort of thing. And you probably wouldn't be surprised to hear that the Elder Scrolls series is home to many, many great heroic characters. Legendary warriors, monarchs turned gods, selfless martyrs, and the handful of protagonists that we embody ourselves, saving the world whenever Todd Howard calls on us to do so. Please help me. But today, in this here video, boys, we are going to have a look at a different brand of video game hero altogether. A much smaller, minor character that in the background of our prophesized actions rises up the ranks of the world through hard work, determination, and a scathing hatred for a certain irritating flying creature. A former felon who puts aside his murderous life of crime to achieve something much larger than himself, a Dark Elf that we first meet at the very beginning of The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, who becomes a living legend of the Dunmer people and a patron saint in the Tribunal Temple. From the humblest of beginnings as a prisoner to the horrifying endlessness of the Soul Cairn, today we are talking about the strange and incredible life of the legendary Saint Jib, the Eradicator. But you know something that I would like to eradicate myself? Mediocre video game experiences. And that's why I'm thrilled to bring you the sponsor of today's video, World of Warships. World of Warships is a free-to-play, naval warfare-themed, massively multiplayer video game available not just on PC, but consoles too, baby. It's an action-packed, high graphical fidelity experience with new content released every single month, and I'm talking about fun stuff like Transformers and Megadeth-themed collaborations. What you do is pick your favorite from hundreds of iconic different vessels across the various ship classes and take to the seas, my brother. Now, you might be thinking, I don't know, Ghost, it's not really my thing. Well. World of Warships sports a massive and constantly growing community with all sorts of different playstyles and levels of competitive fire. Add on to that that all active players starting this month have access to the exclusive Captain's Club, so waste no time, my friends. Check out that Ghost Charm link in the description, and also use promo code BRAVO to earn yourself a nice little starter pack. Thank you so much again to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. And now, without further ado, I am Ghost, your host as always, and let's really dive in the life and legend of Jib. It's no secret that Morrowind has featured heavily on my channel from day one. I mean, my first video to really pop off on the internet period was the Dagoth Urvulenpedia, and the game has remained one of my absolute favorites for years now. The level of depth in the story and world is just absurd. I mean, sometimes when I'm making a video about something to do with Morrowind, I'll boot her up for footage and end up getting just completely swept away in a brand new playthrough. The characters you meet, the places you go, the things you see and do, man, I could go on and on. But Morrowind, as epic and immersive as it can be, does indeed start somewhere. And like many other games, it opens with a very simple cutscene introducing its unique game world while also hinting at your place in it. And for Morrowind, it's this very inky collection of shots of the alien region you are headed to, accompanied by two very distinct voices. The first you hear is the ethereal, mysterious, feminine tones of Azura, Daedric Prince of Dusk and Dawn. First by carriage and now by boat. To the east, to Morrowind. Fear not, for I am watchful. You have been chosen. And then the magic is kind of broken by the velvety gravel of our dear fella. Wake up. We're here. Why are you shaking? Are you okay? Wake up. Stand up. There you go. You were dreaming. What's your name? 
Believe it or not, this is our dashing hero. Who? Now, I know he looks like kind of a drugged up prisoner here because, uh, well, that's what he is. But I promise that Jib, just like the player character, is on his very own journey toward fortune, fame, legend, and plenty of heroics. Well, not even last night's storm could wake you. I heard them say we've reached Morrowind. I'm sure they'll let us go. Quiet. Here comes the guard. But hold the phone. I think we need to pause, go back, and ask a much simpler question. Who is this Jib? I mean, why is he here with us, the Nerevarine on a prison barge arriving in, say, to Neen Vardenfell? Where did his shirt go, and what's up with the cool scar? Well, Jib, when we first meet him, to put it very plainly, is just an average criminal a Dunmer male of unknown origin and unknown age who chose the life of the underworld. And while the region of Morrowind offers several trades in the criminal sector, it seems as a free mer, Jib took to the craft of killing. More specifically, he worked as a freelance assassin for hire, tirelessly moving from one job to the next in an effort to constantly feed his crippling skooma addiction. Now, for the uninitiated, Skooma is a hardcore, hallucinogenic, and highly addictive substance in the Elder Scrolls series derived from something called moon sugar. And buddy, if you are addicted to this stuff, you need the divines. It absolutely ruins your life, deteriorates your personality, and causes you to enter these states of mania during withdrawals that can be very dangerous for both you and those around you. Now, murder is always a booming business in the region of Morrowind for sure. You can make a living doing it, but throwing in that skooma addiction just creates a formula for an unsustainable, disastrous lifestyle. So of course, don't do drugs, kids. But that, unfortunately, was Jib's reality. However he grew up, whatever hand he was dealt by life, led him down a dark, dark, violent path. Well, that then begs the question, how did he get arrested? Why did he get arrested? Well, at some point in the past, the skooma-addicted, ragged, and desperate Jib was skulking the underbelly of Vardenfell looking for work and stumbled upon an enticing assassination job. The target was a high-ranking member of the Great House Redoran, a large and powerful governing body here in Morrowind. Now, to put it lightly, dude, likely the biggest contract Jib had ever accepted or even sniffed. And it seems that Jib wasn't the only guy to take that job as the Morag Tong, a respected, ancient, and legendary guild of assassins, also picked up the same writ. And something tells me, in the assassination world, whoever gets the kill first, wins. Well, Jib, in these days of crime, had acquired a sort of rival in the killing business, an assassin who was a member of the Morag Tong. This rival's identity and beef with Jib is all unknown, which is really unfortunate for me because there's a ton of potential there for some really cool little sub-stories, but at any rate, during this Redoran assassination gig, Jib's rival was several steps ahead of him on the task, and after successfully murdering the target first, intentionally drew the attention of the local guards to cover his tracks. This then led the lagging behind Jib to fall right into the trap, being taken into custody and charged with the target's murder. So damn, I mean, pretty tough start for our hero, right? But remember that The Elder Scrolls is a series full of storylines surrounding prophecy, destiny, and fate. And although Jib now found himself rotting in a jail cell in Vivek City for a murder he was trying to commit but didn't, forced to reflect on the countless decisions that brought him to such a place, this was not the end for this Dunmer, but in fact, a brand new beginning. Now, I think we have all at some point heard some version of the famous quote from James Lane Allen, adversity does not build character, it reveals it. And I'm gonna warn you, opinion incoming. But if you ask me, many people in both the real world as well as fictional ones like this who fall into lives of crime end up there due to a series of just unfortunate events or life circumstances. And the crimes they commit initially usually come from some sort of desperation. I mean, okay, let's take the prison that Jib was in here in Vivek City. If you were to grab 10 random inmates, maybe seven of them are truly monstrous guys, okay? But those other three could all be pretty normal dudes who simply fell on hard times, and maybe one of them was meant for something truly greater. Well, before Jib had much time to contemplate this, he was packed onto a prison vessel, probably with other violent inmates, and taken far away from his home province to the Imperial Prison in the Imperial City of Cyrodiil. Now we can assume he served much of his time here, but the details are completely unknown. Until one day, with potentially years still to burn on his sentence, Jib was shockingly placed on yet another prison ship sailing back to Morrowind to be transferred again to Vivek City, and on that vessel, he found himself alongside who else but the Nerevarine, aka your character in Morrowind. 
And this is where we cross paths. Sexy voice, shirtless, a prisoner for years at this point, and probably just kinda hoping for the best. And I gotta say, although it is a short, very introductory interaction, it's nothing but positive, right? I mean, Jib shows concern for you, and there's a basic sense of camaraderie as you're both prisoners heading toward an unknown fate. But believe it or not, this right here is actually the first and last time you see Jib and Morrowind period. Because the second you enter the census office, he, along with the prison ship, are never to be seen again. Which means all of his life story from here on out that we're talking about takes place off screen, so to speak. But that does not make it any less compelling, badass, or heroic. So after this brief and memorable meeting, you head off into the world of Marwyn to be the chosen one, defeat Dagother, and do all that stuff, while Jib heads back to jail. But hey man, it's okay, because this is where he really does some hard thinking and reflection about himself, who he really is and what he can do to be redeemed. Now this right here is another section of Jib's story that I would love more details on, like canon things, what he thought about, other prisoners he met, the mechanism that brought about this massive change of heart, because the bottom line is, this prison sentence that he was given completely and utterly rehabilitated Jib. Which, when you think about the concept of prison, should be the point, right? I'm sure being forced to get off skooma in the process really helped clear his mind too. And I mean, hey, maybe even meeting a person like us, the Nerevarine, touched by prophecy, had some sort of deep effect on him. Perhaps even gave him a drive to do better. And at last, when Jib was finally freed, he re-entered society hunting feverishly for ways to make amends and serve the people of Marwin. But how? What could his mission be if only there were some large-scale irritating problem that he could solve? No! God! No! God! Please, no! 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 Ugh. Cliff Racers. Absolute bastards, terrorists, hellspawn, the kind of video game enemy that makes you want to throw your computer out the window, leave society forever, and just go live in a cave. Cliff racers have long been one of the most hated things in the entirety of the Elder Scrolls series. The noises they make, the way they track you from like 300 miles away, super high up so you can't use the weight mechanic, then all of a sudden there's five, there's ten, there's fifty, and they're all beating your ass. Irritating does not even begin to describe the experience, man. Just terrible. So I guess then the only thing that would make these massive, deadly, aggressive flying dinosaurs worse would be to experience them firsthand, actually living in Vardenfell and fearing for your actual life because of one of these stinkers. Well, Jib certainly agreed, and he made an active choice. He looked out over the entirety of his home region and said, okay, I know how to make amends for my dark past. I'm gonna kill every single cliff racer. Now, if you ask me, that's awesome. And also sounds rather impossible because these buttholes are literally everywhere, dude. And Jib is just an average cell sword who's been rotten in jail for years. To my knowledge, he never had any magical abilities or particularly masterful combat skills. But on the other hand, they are a legit plague on Morrowind, and driving them from the region of Vardenfell would be more than enough to redeem himself, especially in the public size. And so, the mission began, baby. Legends say Jib, shirtless as ever, mounted a great silt strider and traveled the Ashlands, hunting down and slaying every single flying beast he could find slowly becoming a part of the wild landscape of Vardenfell as he entered the primordial trance of the hunt. And buddy, this was a hunt that lasted multiple years, at times a grueling and seemingly impossible task, yet every day he woke up and continued on. So, of course, over time, the people of Vardenfell noticed his efforts. The roads and skies were legitimately becoming more clear of these pests as the months passed. His legend was growing, but this mission culminated in one incredible and legendary event. So one day, like any other for Jib, while hunting the skies, the Dunmer came across a lone cliff racer, separated from the flock. Now typically they traveled at the very least in pairs or small groups, so very carefully he tracked it, passing over towns and mountaintops, valleys and streams, when at last the lone beast led him to an incredible discovery. A well-hidden and absolutely massive cliff racer nest, and here, Jib made his greatest stand. This battle lasted well over two straight days, a raucous, violent affair, and when all was said and done, Jib stood as the tattered victor. Legend says he slayed well over 76 cliff racers in the fray, driving the core of the beasts from Vardenfell for good, and as he took in the gore of his triumph, he collapsed into a deep, dark sleep. 
Now death would have been a very fitting end right here for Jib, his arc of redemption complete, dying and sacrificing himself to finish his little mission, atoning for all his past sins. But one of the most powerful and enigmatic characters in the entire Elder Scrolls canon had other plans. Enter Vivek, warrior poet and guardian god-king of Vardenfell, the master of Morrowind and undisputed leader of the land at the time of Jib's quest. So Vivek himself had taken some notice of Jib's ongoing actions, and when this epic cliff racer battle concluded, he stepped in to save the life of Jib, bringing him back to the palace in Vivek City to recover in some comfort. But beyond just that, Vivek instantly had Jib sainted within the Tribunal Temple, an absolutely incredibly rare honor given to only 10 other Dunmer for their virtuous life deeds of the past. And interestingly, another saint, Aralor the Penitent, was just like Jib, a reformed criminal, which I think is kind of cool. But Jib graciously took his place as the 11th minor saint, with the title Saint Jib, the Eradicator of the Winged Menace. I mean, Vivek admired his determination, his selflessness, and his quest to make Morrowind a safer place for everyone. And upon being sainted, we can assume Jib probably retired from any sort of fighting, took it easy, made some money, enjoyed fame and fortune for a while. He was awarded all sorts of other titles and honors as well through the remainder of his stay in Morrowind, and St. Jib's Fair was established as a very popular annual holiday and celebration of his heroics all across Morrowind. But I now, for just a second, want to take a step back into the real world here on Earth and move our focus away from the video games to my ancestral homeland the Emerald Isle of Ireland. Now, if you know a little bit of Irish lore, you might know where I'm going with this, as the story of St. Jib very closely mirrors a specific legend surrounding a certain St. Patrick and the beasts that he drove out of Ireland on his path to sainthood. And it is widely accepted amongst us fans that St. Patrick is the main inspiration for this little heroic Morrowind tale. Now, of course, St. Patrick was no skooma addict or murderer early in his life to our knowledge, but he was a missionary, born in Britain and captured by Irish pirates at age 16, then brought on a prison boat to Ireland and held captive for six years. Well, eventually, he was freed and spread Christianity all over Ireland by showing people four-leaf clovers and being like, look, dude, it's a cross, but whatever. According to legend, one day, St. Patrick was fasting and praying on a mountaintop when snakes attacked him and interrupted his vibe with God. Apparently, it wasn't the first time it happened, so Patrick was pissed. He was fed up and drove every single snake from the isle, chasing them into the sea and thus ridding Ireland of the scary pests. Now, I gotta be honest, I think Jib killing all the cliff racers is way more impressive and also cooler. Sorry, Patty. But I do always enjoy finding even the loosest connections to real-world inspiration for these characters, as minor as they may be. It's always very fun stuff. So after achieving his sainthood and becoming an absolute G, Jib took his belongings and actually moved to Cyrodiil, settling in the town of Kavach in the west to pursue a quieter life away from his homeland. And his new task was to write an autobiography, cataloging the incredible life story of Saint Jib, his rise through the criminal world, his arrest, redemption, and Cliff Racer Crusade, of course. But if you've played the next game in the Elder Scrolls series, yeah, I think you know what happens to Kavach, man. It is unfortunately ground zero for the Dremora invasion, the Oblivion Crisis, Mehrunes Dagon's cataclysmic entrance to Tamriel in an attempt to destroy the world. So just as Jib was settling into his quieter life nearing the end of his book, he, along with the majority of the city of Kavach, was in an instant overrun by murderous demons. And I think his experience fighting cliff racers was probably no help here, was easily outmatched and put to death. But remember, that Deidre can be sadistic and cruel beings, so in a fate actually worse than death somehow, Jib, just as he was dying, was soul trapped. Meaning although his body was destroyed, he could never fully experience peace, as his consciousness was imprisoned in the soul cairn to wander confused for all eternity. I mean, damn. After spending probably a third of his mortal life in prison, this is a particularly brutal outcome for our hero. I mean, he had given so much to the people of Morrowind and merely wished to flex how badass he was in a book that would live on longer than he ever could. A truly tragic event, not just for Jib, but every Dunmer worldwide who admired the saint. However, yet again, this is not the end, baby. Because in the fifth game in the series, Skyrim, there is an awesome DLC pack called Dawnguard surrounding all these vampiric storylines and characters. It's a great time. And at a certain point, you are given the opportunity to enter the Soul Cairn looking for a character of some significance in that quest. 
Well, it is very easy to miss, but if you are so lucky or know where to look, you stumble upon the soul of who else but Saint Jib. And the poor guy doesn't even know he's dead. Expect me to write my opus with all of these rude interruptions. But after enlightening him to that fact, he asks you to help him out by collecting the missing pages of his great opus he was working on. In order to write the second volume of my opus, I need the notes from my first volume. Otherwise, I need to do all of this from memory. When I was tossed in here, I felt myself falling, and I dropped the pages I had been holding. There were ten of them in all. Find them for me, please. I beg you. So that you may bring his writing back into Tamriel and it can live forever. Which I think is pretty incredible. It's a really nice little optional quest here. I mean, you finally get to talk to this kind of cult classic character about his life. And believe it or not, it's still only the second time we have ever even seen him in a game. Like I said, he's an off-screen hero, for sure. But this, for now, is where the story of Jib is put to rest. He remains here, trapped, working at a second volume of his great story, but can be at some sort of peace knowing that his writing and life will live on after you assist him. As I have stated a few times now within this video, this is not your typical video game hero, right? I mean, in many ways, I feel like this entire story was written by Bethesda to be a complete joke, a goofy extension of this kind of skooma addicted dude who welcomes you to Morrowind and then disappears. A silly little way to connect something from Morrowind to Oblivion and then to Skyrim just to wink at the fans here and there. Even his heroic deeds, if I'm being honest, of killing all the cliff racers and being sainted, I mean, as far as playing these games and experiencing the world, it means absolutely nothing. We don't return to Morrowind after he did this shit to see the jib temples around the place or experience the roads clear of cliff racers. It's all kind of just this fun fluff outside the usual large scope of Elder Scrolls storytelling. I mean, come to think of it, everything in this video is kind of pointless. And man, do I love that. Because I think Jib is a special hero in the way that the fans of these games have taken to him. After Morrowind, Bethesda probably noticed that people found him cool and thought it would be funny to flesh the guy out a little bit. So they said, okay, how about for Skyrim you meet this ghost and the fans really ate that up? I mean, look at me right now. Not every memorable character has to be in the thick of the story, right? I think something really fun about video games and them being this massive collaborative decades long relationship between the creators and the players is how characters like Jib can kind of emerge as little fan favorites. But I also legitimately see a ton of value in the peripheral world building that characters like Jib offer. His life story and heroics just give further layers to the world of Tamriel, making it feel like a virtual setting with so much that happens outside of our player perspective, in a cheeky way to remind us that yeah, you're the chosen one every time when you're playing these games, but there are other people out there dude, common people, that can do incredible things as well. And I know for a fact that people in the comments are gonna go mentioning my guy Young Scrolls and the incredible Elder Scrolls themed music he creates, so yes, maybe the most significant thing Jib has given us is the EP titled Saint. I mean, for real. These songs are all slappers, but Filthy Rich is the most incredible Young Scrolls song to date. Don't at me, bruh. I love the video too. Check that out. Check him out. Incredible work he does, man. Fact, business, seven figures, life without worry. You're not a gift, she calls your presents cause you're game hurry They buy a little late, but when you're rich, you're never in a hurry Face a shandin, I'm a fan, you would never worry Now Saint Jib didn't necessarily live a full life of a hero And he didn't really die the death of a hero either But the way that he decided to turn things around, serve something larger than himself, and then succeeded is undeniably noble He left his homeland a better place than he found it and was willing to lay his life on the line to do so. He drove the cliff racers from Vardenfell, and for that, we must all raise a glass. So come we here to pray to Saint Jib the Magnificent, eradicator of the winged menace. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening to the end. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons who support this channel so heavily away from YouTube. It means a lot, everybody. Thank you again to World of Warships for sponsoring this here video. Make sure to check out my Ghost Charm link down below and use promo code BRAVO to get a starter pack. So guys, what are some other heroes that we should cover? I mean, I've heard a lot of Link and Solid Snake over the years as suggestions, but drop yours down below. All right, that's all I got for today. Thanks so much again, and I'll see you all very soon. Until next time, peace.